Hello and welcome back to my video series about the Sparball Island system. Today we're going to take a look at one of my own games. The game took place in 2019 in a small tournament in Döbeln in Germany. I finished the tournament on a third place, unbeaten with 5 out of 7 points. And yeah, I even managed to draw a Fide Master, so I was quite happy with my final result. But truth must be told, I still had plenty of room to improve. And yeah, this game is the evidence. And you can see the critical position already on the board. My opponent, a young German player with a rating of nearly 1900 points, played e5 to e4 in his last move. And yeah, that was actually a blunder. So it's right to move and win, but take your time. Before we jump right into the tactic, I just want to show you how I reached the position and what was my thought process during the game. So without further ado, let's get started. So the game started with the moves d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, bishop f4, d6, and e4. And believe it or not, but I already got the feeling that I tricked my opponent into a variation he didn't want to play. <clears throat> um, if you look at black's moves, then you got a feeling that he wanted to play king's indian defense. The king's indian defense is an opening that starts after the moves d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, and d6. And black's main um, break in this position is the pawn move e5, but in certain positions he also got a move c5. But e5 is the main break. <coughs> but if you look at the position we got, then it's quite different. I don't have a pawn on c4, but instead I have a bishop on f4. And this position is also known as a poke defense. We could easily reach the position if we would just start the game with the move e4. Oops, sorry, e4. e6, e4, knight f6 attacking the e4 pawn, knight c3, g6, and bishop f4. Well, you may ask why I'm telling you this, and the answer is pretty simple. If black is a king's indian defense player against first d4, how likely is it that he's going to play the perk against e4? Uh, he probably would have played e5 or e6 or c5 or c6 against e4 or anything else, but is he really a perk defense player? That's the question. And if not, then I tricked him into an opening he doesn't know. And I played several times a boots game, so I have an advantage in knowledge, right? And if I remember his expression on face right, then that's exactly what happened. Uh, that's not an op op uh, opening he wanted to play. Um, anyway, the perk defense is a normal opening. Um, it's not quite common on the top grandmaster level, but I think on my level it's absolutely fine. So. Uh, the game isn't lost at this point, but I just wanted to mention that with this little move order you probably trick your opponent in an, into a variation he doesn't know and so that's an advantage for you, right? Well, anyway, the game continued with the move knight v2 d7 and he sticks with the plan that he wanted to play, wants to play the move e5. I myself prevent the move by playing knight to f3. It's always good to think about what's the plan of your opponent and then to stop him from doing so. And that's why I played knight to f3. So here he played bishop to g7 and I played an important move you should remember, queen to d2. With this move I make room for my king to castle alongside, bringing the rook to the d-file and I probably will start an attack later on the king side with moves such as bishop to h6, h4 and h5 to follow. Black castled, I castled queenside, he played c6, and now I thought, well, 
that e5 looks like an interesting move. I mean, how can you stop him from playing e5? Well, probably by playing it yourself. And that's why I decided to play e5. <clears throat> and here black has some options. He could have played his knight to h5, d5 or e8. He's decided to play knight to e8, but before I just want to mention that knight to h5, I would probably have gone for a move like bishop h6, and after knight to b6, freeing up his light square bishop, h3 with the threat of g4, t takes e5, d takes e5, queen takes d2, bishop takes d2, f5 to stop us again um, from playing g4. And now e takes f6, knight takes f6, and bishop d3. Well, I think white is absolutely fine in this position. I mean, we can easily play against the isolated pawn on the seventh square. And yeah, we are fully developed. And I think white is a little, at least a little bit better. So the other move would have been knight to d5. And this is a complicated move because let's say we take the knight and he takes it back then it's pretty tempting to take on b6 because we are winning a pawn. But I analyzed this position in quite detail in a Leecher study and you can find the link to the Leecher study down below in the description of the video. I will put the link there so if you're interested in this position just check out the study because well yeah, we are up a pawn, but black really got some interesting threats and it's not that easy for white to maintain with an advantage. So if I would have reached this position again, I may would have think about moves like h4 or even bishop h6 um, because they are just simply a little bit more in the style of the opening, you know, just go for the attack right away. Anyway. <clears throat> In the game, my opponent played knight to e8. And here I decided to play bishop h6, but there was a better move. h4 right away would have been just better because what are black's options? Black has two options here. He could stop me from playing h5 by playing h5 himself, but this would lead to <clears throat> a nice position for me after e6. He has to take and now I can play bishop b3 and with his pawns on e6 and g6 being pretty bad, well, I think I would find it pretty easy to gain an advantage in this position. The computer gives it already as plus two. I mean, you have moves like rook h3 one attacking the pawn, you could go in with your knight, you could go into h6 with your bishop. So I think you got a pr pretty, pretty decent position that way. So h4 would be an interesting option. What else could have black played in this position? Well, he could have taken my pawn. Oops, sorry, my pawn on, on b5, uh, e5. And if I, but if I take it back, well, then again, I have the threat of play, playing e6 or playing h5. And even if it's not easy for black to develop, I mean, how can he get this bishop into the game? He cannot move his knight away because then his queen would be loose. So yeah, it's not that easy for him to develop all his pieces, right? Anyway, I didn't play h4. I played um, bishop to h6 with the idea of playing h4, h5 because I didn't want him to play h5 himself. So I block his h pawn from going to h5 so that I can safely go h4, h5. That's the reason why I played bishop h6, and that's not a bad move, but I think that h4 immediately would have been a little bit better. <clears throat> anyway, black played um, queen to a5. Another option would have been to take the pawn on e5, because if I take it back, then he could take it again with queen to c7, and after the exchange of bishops, um, I could go in with the queen to h6 to threaten knight to g5 and mate on h7. 
So he probably would have gone for knight f5 and after queen f4, well, I think we, re we can stop here at this position because I think white's pretty fine. I mean, you have again the threat of h4, h5 and black still has to develop his queen side. So yeah, I think we're just fine in this position. Anyway, in the game, Black played queen a5. And here, I started attacking right away with the h4 move. And he captured on e5, and now I guess Simon Williams, the well-known ginger GM, would be proud of me because I pushed Harry again to h5. Have, don't have any fear, just push your h pawn up to the board and attacking Black's king, right? And yeah, Black's best move in this position would have been e takes d4. Because after knight takes d4, g takes h5, knight b3, queen to b6, and rook takes h5. Well, <clears throat> I'm not sure. I mean, the computer says that that's, that that's the best option for Black. But let's be honest, if this is the best variation Black can get, then white is already clearly better. If you ask me, I mean, I have simple uh, moves to follow, uh, putting my bishop on c4 or on c3, bringing my d uh, rook to the h file. So, yeah, the black king looks kind of weak already. So I really would love to get this position, right? So black in this position played e4. And this is actually a big blunder that wins the game for white nearly immediately and in the game i really had the feeling that this position is won for white so i had a long think i guess i fought for about 40 to 50 minutes about this position uh, because i have i had already similar positions in blitz games in online chess so i was pretty sure that i should i'm there must be a way that i could win this position but as you can see in the result, uh, I didn't found a way. I found many ways where I get a clearly, clearly winning position, but there was one particular variation where I just couldn't find a way through. And this was the reason for me to play the simple move knight takes d4. Because after queen takes d2, bishop takes d2, I thought, well, okay, I didn't win right on the spot, but I still got a good position. And yeah, I still got a good position, but well, I consumed a lot of time <coughs> thinking about a mate and in the end I wasn't able to convert my small advantage in this position and after 50 more moves we agreed to a draw. So what I would like you to do is pause the video and try to find a move for white that's better than my move. I give you three seconds, seconds to do so. One two, three. Well, I hope you all found the solution. I mean, that would mean that you are probably better than I am. So that's not too bad, is it? But if you didn't find a move, that's no problem. As you already know, I'm the kind of guy who likes to give second chances. So in this particular position, my hint for you would be that both moves, bishop takes g7 and h takes g6 are winning. Um, they are most likely transpose to each other, so I will stick with bishop takes, takes g7 in my analyze. So you should uh, analyze bishop takes g7. And I'll also give you another hint. This is a big hint. Um, the position that I wasn't able to calculate probably was bishop takes g7, knight takes g7, h takes g6 and e takes f3. In this position I didn't found a way to break through with white and that's the reason why I stopped the variation and played the knight takes e4 move instead. So I advise you to pause the video again if you don't if you're not already found the solution and I give you three seconds to do so. One, two, three. Well, <clears throat> I hope you all found the solution. As already mentioned, 
Bishop takes g7 and h takes g6 are both fine. Um, as already mentioned as well, I will concentrate on bishop takes g7, but just to let you know, for example, if you play h takes g6 and he would play knight d2 f6, what's a logical move, then you could simply grab the bishop and after he grabs the purple knight, you have the nice move um, g2 f7 check. And after rook takes f7, you have knight to e5. And this is a position we will see later uh, in our analyze of the bishop takes g7 line. So let's start with the bishop takes g7 line. <coughs> Here black has two options. He could take it with the, uh, with the knight, what's probably best, but he also could take it with the king. So if he takes it with the king, we would take the pawn on g6 and threaten queen to h6 check with a mate to follow. So the best move for black in this position is h5. Stopping us from going to h6 with our queen and here we simply grab another pawn. And now black has two options. Let's say he grabs um, the pawn in f7. Then we simply go in with our knight and um, threatening queen to g5. So let's say he grabs the knight. Then we say check. Black cannot retreat with the knight because then um, the queen on a5 would be loose. So he has to go back with the king and then we simply grab the knight. And as you can see, our pieces are flying into the game. The bishop goes to c4, the knight takes the pawn on e4, our rook can come to h5. The d even the d-rook could come to h1 if he wants to. Or, you know, all our pieces are taking part in the attack and black is pretty much lost. So another move in this position would have been Oh, sorry, sorry. Another move in this position would have been rook to f5 to stop us from going to g5 with the queen, but then it's even simpler. We we'll just play g4, opening up more lines against black's king, and after the moves like knight takes knight, pawn takes rook, knight f3, queen e3, queen takes f5, knight takes e4, we're up in um, exchange and well, Black's king is still in some danger, right? So with all the open files, Black won't be able to survive. So this is what happens after rook takes f7. Another move would have been e takes f3. But here we simply just grab the knight. He will grab our queen. And after g takes f3, I made probably a little bit too much errors on the board, but I guess you easily understand that we are much, much better. Our, all our pieces are flying into the attack and the black king is all alone. He has no defender. There's no way he can uh, survive such an attack. Well, you may ask, okay, you're stopping at such a position, so, but why don't you show a mate or, you know? But I think it's not necessary. Y you cannot um, think 20 moves ahead, but if you can think up to this point, uh, then you and you are an experienced player then you simply know okay this game is over this is simply one for white there's no way black can defend this probably and so it is the computer gives it already as plus 10 for white plus 10 it's more than being up queen so let's go back in this position black could also try to take the knight with, uh, the bishop with the knight and here our best move is h takes g6 and now black has four moves. I will start with the worst, h takes g6, because here we have the simple move queen h6 and we are threatening queen h8 and queen h7 mate. So black has two moves to prevent the mate. One is knight h5, but well, after knight g5, we are threatening queen to h7 mate, so he has to play knight d to f6. And here we simply take the pawn on e5, uh, e4, and now it's not clear how white can defend. Because if we, are if we are able to take this one away, he cannot grab it back because of the mate. If he takes it that way, then we simply have a mate on h8. Just try to find a move for black. 
the only move that would stop a mate immediately would be the queen sacrifice on g5 and if that's the only move that stops us from mating black then black's really lost so this is not an option another move would have been knight f6 and here we simply grab the pawn in f7 because after let's say rook takes f7 we have knight e5 and if the rook moves back we can go in with queen h6 and <clears throat> yeah there are already so many threats uh, let's say he plays bishop f5 so then we go for bishop c4 check e6 rook b to g1 don't get me wrong all these moves aren't forced that could play other moves but he's already down seven points compared to computer and what i want to do is I just want to show you the, the patterns uh, how white would end this attack. I mean, of course, in this position, uh, black probably could have played a move like bishop e6 six as well, but then we simply would just grab this uh, pawn and he cannot take it back because of uh, queen h7 checkmate. So you get a feeling um, that I just want to make you understand the position is already overwhelming for white so um, just to finish the conclusion yeah i just show you some more moves in this position for example black can already surrender of course i mean let's say he goes back with a bishop then we just win a rook and if he plays rook to g6 then we have the queen h4 move and we're, again we are winning there you know it's not all forced of course but try to find a better move for black you you won't be able to find better moves and this is what what's important i mean in my calculation i stopped at this point because i knew okay all my pieces will fly into the game the bishop will come and the, the queen will come and i probably could push this one i can bring in this knight so this is what's important you see, okay, Black's King is absolutely open and all your pieces are flying into the attack. You can't stop calculating at this point, I think. If there's no real threat from Black, why you cannot calculate double Black's move, but you can get a feeling that you will win this position, right? So anyway, another move Black could have tried is F takes G6. And here, well, if he opens up his King that easily, we should uh, place our Bishop on C4. After king h8, we have queen h6, threatening mage, uh, mate on h7. So a good move for him would be knight to f6. And yeah, now we can go simply knight to e5, because then we are threatening knight takes g6 mate. And if he wants to defend it, he probably will go for bishop f5, and then we go g4. And after a move like bishop e6, we simply could just take pawn on e4. And again, it's the same tactic you all saw earlier. Like, can, if we are managed to um, get rid of the knight on f6, then h7 is weak again. So the computer says it's already made a 9. I don't want to show it to you. I mean, you, if you want to go to my leech study, there you can try it out for yourself. What's really important is that you get a feeling, okay, this attack cannot be bad. This attack must go through. And if you got that feeling, then you are absolutely right because it's a crushing attack. So the last move I want to analyze is the move that I couldn't calculate through. And it was e takes f3. And of course, I mean, if I offer him the to take my knight, then I, I should check what happened if he take the knight, no? right? I saw all the other variations quite in detail and I knew, okay, they are winning. But in this position, I couldn't find a way through because I thought, my, what I thought was that if I take the pawn on h7, then he simply can step aside with his king and I don't see a way how I can break through. And the computer agrees. The computer says black is better in this position. The best defender of black is my pawn on h7. This goddamn bastard. What is he doing? Why does he convert to the black side? Really. 
there's no way to break through. To break through. So this wouldn't help. So I thought, okay, what about Queen H6? I mean, I've written mate on H7 and doesn't look too bad. So Black probably would play Knight F6. To be honest, that's the only move that works. And after then I thought, okay, we already saw the motive two times earlier. So what about knight e4? Trying to get rid of the f6 knight and mate him on h7. Well, here black again has to find an only move and this is f takes g6. And now we would take off the knight and after rook takes f6, we have to check on h7, king, h, uh, king f7. And now the move is queen h8 with the threat of rook h7 and taking the knight, but <coughs> it's only a draw. Why is it only a draw? Because black has this last move, queen a2, and after rook h7, he can go for queen a1, king d2, queen a5, and I have to go back to c1 and agree in a perpetual check and a draw. Because if I would go for c3, what looks logical, then there's a nice spread. Um, well, I just want you to pause the video and try to figure out why in this position white is losing. I give you three seconds to do so. One, two, three. Well, I hope I hope you all found the solution. If not, um, I'm giving you a little hint. If my king would be on a white square, then this bishop could probably check my king and attack my queen at the same time. So I hope with that hint you were able to find a solution and I give you another three seconds to pause the video. One, two, three. Well, yeah, compared to the first tactic you have to find, uh, this one is pretty easy. The move is queen g5 check. And if I move to c2, then he has the simple move, bishop f5 check. I have to move again and I'm losing my queen in the game. So that's why I would have to agree in a draw in this position. And because I was the higher rate player, I didn't want to agree into a draw. So yeah, what I did, I messed up the position and played knight takes e4, right? In this position. But what is the right solution, you may ask now? Well, the solution is rook takes h7. In my head, I always thought, well, if I want to mate black's king, my queen has to go first. That's why I thought hours about queen h6. But uh, as I already showed you, I didn't found a clear way for white to win. And yeah, in the end, it would be a forced draw. And... I, always, I also thought about hours for g takes h7, but this is even worse. But I didn't thought for one minute on rook takes h7. But yeah, it's game over. There's nothing black can do. Try to find a move. Let's say he takes a pawn. Then we go in with the queen and the threatening queen takes g7 mate. If he wants to stop it, let's say he plays rook f7, then we have the mate on h8. Pretty simple. Yeah, so what else could black, could black try? Just let me get rid of the arrows. Um, well, black could have tried in this position knight d to f6. What's absolutely logic, but now stunning move and the only move that wins the game, queen h6. We are threatening two mates, one on g7 and one on h8. If we want so, we are already threatening three mates because we could mate him on g7 with the rook and with the queen. But that's not important, right? We're just threatening many, many mates. And the only move to stop this mate, believe it or not, is queen g5. Well, if that's the move that, that's, if that's the only move that works, then black is busted because we simply could just grab the queen, he will take the rook, we will take the pawn, he will step aside. Well, we will grab the, another pawn and well, the queen against the rook, and yeah, 
I mean, come on, how how can White lose this in any world? There's no way White can lose this game. So yeah, I didn't saw that you can go in with the Rook first. I didn't saw that move and that's why I didn't play the variation and in the end I only got it wrong. So let's conclude what we've learned today. Well, we've learned against Kings Indian players, our variation is pretty good because we could lure him into a Perk's defense um, which he probably is not playing as black against first e4. So we would have an advantage in knowledge and I think that's a pretty good thing. And if we are in the perks defense, we will place our queen on d2 so that we can castle queenside, attack and attack black on the king side with moves as Bishop h6, h4, and h5. And yeah, that's probably all I want to want you to take away from this video because it's unlikely that you will get this exact position on the board, let's be honest. But it's important that you remember how to attack black. And you attack him by placing your queen to d2, placing your bishop to h6, and push up Harry all over the board. This is the way you win the game. So I hope you liked the video and you learned something. If you did, please hit the like button and the subscribe button and yeah, probably write me a comment down below and let me know if you already had such a position on a board or a similar position and tell me how it went, right? So see you next time.